seek him here, they seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That cursed, elusive Pimpernel. Brother, I received your message. My heart stopped beating almost when I learned that the Pimpernel had been wounded. I do not know for whom I fear most, for you or for him. But I will do what you ask me. Somehow I will find out his true identity and tell him that you need his help. May heaven watch over you both, your devoted sister, I knew that if I was patient, my plan would work. Well done. Keep watching Fleury's house. Do not let him suspect. Fleury and his fool sister will lead us to this Scarlet Pimpernel. Dear lady, I can't dance any longer. Lord Fenton, pray will you come to my assistance? Delighted, dear Blakeney, oh. delighted. Absolutely exhausted. season for the gossip, Blake. I wonder what they're saying. <laughs> it's not hard to imagine. Fancy giving an idiot like Blake near gum. Bound another fellow would end up by shooting himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never there's any suspicion of damp in the air. The infernal thing hurts. Oh, how yeah, agonizing for you. It's terrible. <laughs> Your servant, madam. Oh, may I present, uh, Sir Percy Blakeney, Madame Melanie, Princess de Monsantes. So young and yet married. Impossible. So young and a widow. Uh, allow me to offer my condolences. It is not so really so very sad. I did not even meet the prince before I married him, at a ripe age of ten. Faxed And then, when I was ready to take on the duties of a wife, seven years later, he was dead. Oh, bless me at the untimely age of 80. Uh, well, then may I bow to the wisdom born of your experience? Oh, oh, no, forgive me, I cannot bow. It hurts too much. Oh, I am so sorry. An accident. You see, take the other day... Take the princess into the garden and tell her all about it, Breaker. It has bored me with it a dozen times, so if you'll... Excuse me. Thank you. I hope it isn't too damp out there. Perhaps if we were to find some corner safe from the draft. My dear princess, I, I'm not really what you'd call a sportsman. Uh, nevertheless, I was determined to try, to do my best. And so I placed the silly gun against the fence so that I could climb over the fence because I wanted to climb over. I really do think I'm boring you. Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh, but permit me, madam, I will take my leave. No, wait. Pray go on, Sir Percy. You placed the gun on the fence. Well, if you're, you're, you're quite sure that I'm not fatiguing you, 
Uh, yes, I, I did. I, I placed the gun against the fence. And then my spaniel started yapping. Well, I said, Augustus, uh, Augustus, that's the spaniel's name, you know. Augustus, I said, my nerves simply will not stand it. But then Augustus started to yap again. And then I tried to land him a cloud. Well, then, then Augustus tripped up over the gun, and the, the gun tripped up over me, and... Oh! Oh, dear! The bullet went in one side, and it came out the other. I made a wound almost nine inches long. The, 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 the bullet entered at an angle. Really? Well, you don't imagine I shot myself, do you? <laughs> what earthly reason would I have for inventing such a story? Do you mean what reason has uh, Percy Blakeney? Or what reason has uh, Scarlet Pimpernel? I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about. Twice. Once in England and once in France. An English stranger saved my life. And what makes you imagine that this foolish, fatiguing fellow could be me? I received a letter this morning. It was from my brother, Jacques, who remains in France to fight the revolution. And he told you I was the Scarlet Pimpernel? He said the Scarlet Pimpernel was shot in the arm and wounded in a sword fight with Chauvelin's troops. Then when they laughed and that night, I remembered a man who laughed when he saved my life. A man who has haunted my memory, although I have never seen his true face. <laughs> no, I am not mistaken. I am your servant, madam. Now and always. Then help my people. My brother Jacques writes that there is, there is a new edict to suppress the liberties of the people being prepared. He needs help to resist it. Your brother, What's his name? Jacques Fleury. Jacques Fleury. Where does he live in Paris? Oh, I know only that he is hiding somewhere in the, in the village of Montmartre. Oh. You know, it's a most extraordinary thing. It's not only my arm, but my leg, my shoulders, my backbone. It even gives me a headache. Oh, oh my dear Lord Fenton, I was uh, just telling the princess yes, all I'm about... Yes, I'm sure you've told everyone. But since he can't dance... Oh. Won't you come in too, my friend? Uh, no, too, too fatiguing. Perhaps a breath of fresh air may help. Andrew, we leave for Paris tonight. What, with that arm? I'm afraid Chauvelin and Madame la Guillotine will not wait for it to mend. of our glorious new Republic of France. There are those among us who would destroy what we have fought and bled to create. Men who want power to create a new aristocracy for their own purposes. Tiger! Master Chauvelin and his henchmen haven't done exactly that. He's leading out. But your leaders are not fools, citizens. According to the decrees of the government, tomorrow all able-bodied men will assemble for enlistment into the National Guard. But where are the weapons that we are to put into their hands? You citizens must help. Those of you who have arms must sacrifice them to the Republic. Sacrifice our arms to put into the chase? The guns you took with you to the chase, however old, however loved by you, will gain new glory in the arsenal of the National Guard. I hereby decree that every citizen in possession of arms will surrender such arms at the headquarters of the Committee of Public Safety within 24 hours or suffer death. The soldiers of the Republic will have the power to enter and search the home of any citizen without warning. And Madame Guillotine waits for traitors. Come along. Where are we going? To the village of Montmartre to find Fleury. Thank <laughs> you. 
You say, citizen, when a man is blind, he learns to listen. Other people wouldn't have noticed your voice. Soldiers! Comrade! Comrade! I do not ask you to leave me to Fleury. I only ask you to deliver him a message. Tell him that the Chat Noir in the Rue Normandie he will find a friend. You can go now. I will find Fleury. Thank you, my friend. No, no, my friend. That blind beggar was not the Scarlet Pimpernel. The Pimpernel works more carefully than that. The blind man carried a message from him to Fleury. <laughs> I know exactly the workings of the Pimpernel's mind. Have no fear. This time I have laid the trap carefully. And it is about to close. He will try to seize the arms we are collecting for the National Guard. See some for Fleury. <laughs> what a triumph that would be for him. Watch Fleury. Follow his every move. He will lead us to this Scarlet Pimpernel. Ah, you clumsy fool! What a thousand pardons, citizen. Oh, you have spilled all my wine. I am Jacques Fleury, monsieur. I bring you greetings from your sister. What am I to do? I have no money left. It is too late. Those men, they are following what me. What do you mean they are following I me? I shall buy you some more when the serving maid has done. Yeah, you will buy me some more. I wish some more wine. I have no... You oh. recognize me. It is no good. In a moment, I shall make a loud and reasonable statement against our new glorious republic. Tell me, Fleury, if I were not here and they were trying to capture you, what would you do? I should die resisting them. Farewell, my friend. We will live or die together. Let us go somewhere else. We have the serving maids are not too lazy to work now that our cursed government has come into being. You do not like the new order, citizen. No, and I do not like you. <laughs> The reputation of the Scarlet Pimpernel has not been exaggerated. To throw a man with one arm is a trick I learned from a sailor from the China Seas. You use your opponent's own strength. What to business? What is your aim? You have heard of the emigre. But of course. Men of the Ancien Regime sworn to overthrow the government by force of arms. We, and I am one of them. We weigh thousands strong at the German border. We have no arms. You heard of today's mobilization order. You know they are collecting arms for the National Guard. We must have those guns for our men. I regret, monsieur. I cannot help you there. Politics are no concern of mine. But we are fighting to save France. I believe that, for I know you are a man of honor. But who knows, one day France may be at war with England. I will rescue Frenchmen, but I will not arm them. Chauvelin wants those arms to oppress the people of Paris. It is 
better then that nobody should have them than that the innocent should suffer. Is that your sincere wish? I swear it. Let us work together then to save the innocent. It is strange to know a man as a friend, yet not to know his face. I'm sure there is some pointed reply to that, but uh, I cannot think of it at the moment. How did my sister recognize you in London? I do not know. And I was so pleased with the performance of exaggerated suffering I gave her. I must have slipped somehow. She is well and happy? I think so. And I think she loves her brother dearly. Why don't you come back with me to England when our work is accomplished? I would like to, but there is other work for me here. You would not join the League of the Scarlet Tentacle. I am proud that you should ask me. But no one knows better than yourself the reason I must refuse. Because you are a Frenchman? I hope and pray our two countries may never be at war. But we both know that if the madmen crazed with ambition who have seized power in France... Then you would fight for France. As you would fight for England. Even a false, enslaved England. But I think friendship can see through the disguises of nations as it can through disguised faces. When you see my sister, will you tell her I think of her always? It is to make her future safe that I must remain in France. I will. I've managed to hire some carts. Good. Well, while you and our friend here disguise yourselves as soldiers of the Republic, I will beard Citizen Chauvelin in his den. You don't! You idiot! Have you no idea who the second man was? The Scarlet Pimpernel! But he spoke French. Do you suppose that he eludes us by speaking English? You are still at attention! I have been standing for two hours, Citizen Chauvelin. Oh. Then perhaps we will let you lie down. At the feet of Madame Guillotine. Now go and answer it. I am Citizen Chauvelin. Uh, he is so much bigger than you. What has size got to do with it? State your business, Citizen. I have come to obey the order. And deliver my arms. But I am an old man, not a horse. If you have a musket, hand it to the soldiers outside the door. Uh, I cannot do so. I have no cart or animal. I am not big and strong like this fellow. How can an old man like me carry a dozen muskets? A dozen muskets? You admit to having that quantity of arms? Not forbidden before last night. Where did you get them? From the cursed Aristo. <laughs> you will surrender these muskets immediately. I will do so. But then you must send people to collect them and help me. All right. I live two kilometers from here. I have walked all this way with my bad foot. If the Republic wants the arms, they should send men to collect them. Don't lean on oh, me, old man. I am tired myself. I'm a kind of a trusted Englishman. The citizens are angry about the distance they must go to deliver their arms. They had better obey my orders. They still keep their arms. Even a complaining old fool may sometimes talk sense. Where do you live, old man? Rue Peronet. A cart will take you home. Start the collection in your quarter. You are a very clever man, my son. It is lucky for the Republic that somebody is. And you? Are a big oaf. Oh, shove. Oh, no, I 
Was he all yet? Citizens, surrender your arms, obey the decree. God bless citizen Chauvelin. Thank you, citizen. Oh, thank you, citizen. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Hand in your arms. Your cannon. Your toothpicks, citizen you like. They will all be welcome to citizen Chauvelin. Save your necks, but surrender your arms. Come on, come on. Come, citizens. Come, citizens, do not delay. The hour approaches. Madame Guillotine waits. In the cart. Come, citizens. This is the last of the load. Uh, well, then get rid of the carts. What is sacrifice to protect the innocent? The day may come, monsieur, when people may pray that all the arms in the world could be drowned so easily. This is farewell, monsieur. Prosper well in your work. You and yours. Next time we meet, it may be as enemies on the field of battle. I trust we will fight with swords, monsieur. And not in the Chinese fashion. Oh, but if you were to disarm me, what should I do then? I will give you a parting present. Look. When I run at you, you catch me by your left arm. Twist your shoulder. Step back. Try. Oui. You see how easy it is. I was not able to help your brother as I might have wished. But I think we reached a profitable understanding. I had hoped that he would come with you to England. He is young. And he is a Frenchman. His place is in his country. And to fight other countries? That is the fate of most young men. Young men never know a better fate. One day, perhaps. But not in our lifetime. Tell me one thing, madame. How did you recognize me? Then give me your hand. When you rescued me from Chauvelin, you kissed my hand. And then the other evening here on the balcony, you kissed my hand again. And you knew me from that. A man hides many things from a woman. But when he kisses her, she knows him for what he really is. It was though the heart of Sir Percy Blakeney was denying his foolish exterior. Not the kiss of a lover, but of a friend. 